Yeah, hi. All righty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night. Well, not late night, late out of date, early morning, AEW Dynamite review. Winter is coming. More like winter is coming of shit. You see, usually, you know, winter is coming, I would say, from what AEW usually would do. AEW Winter is Coming is like one of their big shows they would usually do to make it seem intriguing, exciting. It would basically be like, what, their pay-per-view for free on, on TV specials, right? Again, it's one of their typical stupid... Paper, even though nowadays, yeah, thankfully, they're building two pay-per-views now. They have pay-per-views instead of doing gay shit where it kind of ruins the... they rather not really make their shows intriguing. They have to rely on pay-per-view specials on TV instead. But, when you kind of have a show like Winter is Coming, which you kind of establish as a bigger show to care about... What the fuck are you doing? This show was not intriguing. What was so big about this show where it needed to have a tagline? Winter is coming. Like, my ass. Like, you might as well fucking had Winter is coming becoming a pay-per-view. But seriously, it was legit coming of shit. It was fucking shit. It was not a good show. Literally, last week felt like a show more that you should have called Winter is coming than this shit. Why wasn't last week Winter is Coming when you had Edge and Christian for the TNT title? Why didn't it maybe happen tonight? Or why not? If you want to do something big for Toronto or what was it, Canada, you know, why wasn't last week Winter is Coming where you could have called that show Winter is Coming and did some big matches there? You had, again, after all, the fucking women's title match too that night and whatever. You had MJF and the Devil, whatever. Why didn't Sting maybe wrestle on this show? Since, again, you're having this retirement tour. I mean, he's freaking retiring uh, on a Revolution. And he had his debut in Winter is Coming. Why didn't you do stuff like that? What was so big about this show? Nothing really big happened tonight. Oh, but the devil. I don't give a fuck, really, about the devil. Because I honestly know they're going to probably do some shit where the review is going to be some stupid fucking review. It's going to probably make no fucking sense. And honestly, I really, really don't care. Because, again, the possibilities are stupid and I don't really care. I understand the most logical fucking reason could be if Adam Cole get it. Because he's so buddy-buddy, you know. It's going to be betrayal shit. But, in all honesty, like, why should I really care? Because I don't really like Adam Cole anyways. If it's Jack Perry, he's fucking retarded. If it's fucking Kyle O'Reilly, he's fucking dumb and retarded. It's gonna be fucking like it's gonna be the end of the company as well. Freaking only if it's like a fucking indie vanilla midget jobber who doesn't draw a fucking dime, who's the fuck is gonna care? Okay, it legit has to be someone who's like a big star. But literally, there's nobody on this fucking company. Would like how would it make sense? And like literally, a lot of people in this company don't like. Who cares? Just saying. Grab your Coca-Cola, drink my new sleep, spy missing bitches, go, oh shit, oh shit, that's all I have to say, because, well, I already poured myself and I'm tired, but, seriously, I hope y'all drink my new sleep, and maybe you grow your brain muscles, because this show is retarded. Like, in all honesty, again, the devil made more sense, even though, how would it make... It's like, okay, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense of why fire and whatever cliche. But it would make more sense. Even though it's it's not going to happen. If CM Punk was the devil, it would be a better reveal than all these fucking people. Okay? But hey, whatever, that's not going to happen. They really have to think of something. They have to think of something to make this reveal fucking good. But I don't know. I don't care. It's not my company. I want I want wrestling to succeed, but fucking wrestling is fucking dog shit. So why should I even care in the end of the day, right? Because wrestling, it's not wrestling is dead. It's fucking dead. Anyway, so the show started with um, some shit. I don't fucking know. Um, we're gonna talk about it. What the fucking happened on this show? So the show started with I believe. Oh yeah, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe comes out. He says, you know. Ugh. In World's End, I'm about to, I was supposed I was gonna face MJF and take my time myself. I was a protective cliche, basically. You know, getting he's a big, good baby, he's a good guy, 
or whatever, because apparently he's a tweener now or something. I don't fucking care. Um. Do, 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 come on. Okay, so um. Yeah, you, you know, he comes out. It says like he it, it, by surprise when he was dealing with the devils. He was supposed to protect MGF, but he failed. Now it's costing him a shot of the world title. And then he accuses one man for known as beard trick and as a smell of a beard that I, I have f f smelled before. A sort of cowboy, and he accuses Hangman and Page of this. You see, by the description of what he was saying, it felt like it made more sense that if the guy who smashes beer bottles or whatever is a guy called James Storm. And again, the, the idea like if James Storm, let's say, is the guy as the devil, how would it make sense? Besides that failed gimmick where he had three other guys and attacked TNA, where it made no sense really, where he had like a wife family with ripoff, and also he basically um, had some failed gimmick where get it, he was I don't know some fucking gimmick where he was like wearing black and where he was wearing a suit. It was fucking stupid, but I don't care. I would rather have that as the reveal as the devil than anybody, cause like. Whatever, how, I mean, how does it make sense for him targeting MJF? I don't fucking care. I mean, I don't know. But seriously, the description he was saying made more sense for him to accuse James Storm. Since when does that hangman on a page look like a guy, oh, get it, he drinks beer and whatever, even though he, he literally sounds like a James Storm. Unless he just a tip, unless everybody likes to fucking be a typical cowboy, just this, the same shit, I don't fucking know. Hammond comes out and says that I didn't do it and you won't believe me, whatever. And then, like, uh, Samoa! Like, fucking Roderick Strong comes out. I don't know, get it? Because he's going to er exaggerate with every name he says. It says, I'm Jeff, dude. You gotta believe me, man. And I forgive you. I don't fucking know. He's trying to, I like, gay, hey, look, toss him descent. I don't fucking know. Make everybody hate MJF. Because, get it? He's all buddy, buddy with his butt. I don't fucking care. Anyways, Hangman Page defeats Roger Strong in the opening match, and I don't care. So basically, this felt like a WWE segment. Or this felt like what WWE usually would do. A segment leads to a match cliche. Why would I like this? I was surprised, like, what, this is happening in AEW? Like, they're actually doing a stupid segment to a match? This felt like WWE-esque. And not, obviously, this is not a good way. This is something I hate what WWE does. They fucking do a, turn a segment into a match, and I don't care. I, especially as a match I don't give a fuck to watch. Apparently it was a girl open match. I don't give a fuck. Hangman won. Samoa Joe and Hang Hangman. Uh, I don't know. They gotta deal with it. I don't fucking care. Andrade defeats Brody King in the Continental Classic Blue League. I don't know how that made sense, but okay. Because, like, isn't he, like, smaller than fucking that Brody King guy? I don't care, honestly. I did not care for this match. There's no... I Again, my problem is my, I don't care for matches that have no story. I don't. I'm sorry. And I don't really care for a lot of these wrestlers. I just don't. I'm sorry, okay? Well, I, I can't be sorry, because they didn't bother to make me care. But so, it's fucking AEW's fault. And I'm sorry, I'm not a smart. I'm not a fucking stupid gay indie lover who likes to see men just roll around and get sweaty for no reason. There's a reason why people like wrestling. is because of characters and stories. How the fuck am I going to care about the matches without that? Especially when there's no star power. Why should I care about that when, like, no-name jobbers? I'm sorry, no one cares. Lana was there, aka oh, CJ Perry. That's a strange name. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. She looked amazing, which that was the only takeaway of this shit. So whatever. The Von Erics on on AEW. They returned to Texas. Oh hee haw. Marshall and Ross Van Eric will make their AEW debuts on Friday on Rampage team with Orange Cassidy. What a fucking fuck you. That my sound. What up? And that was, that was like this big thing they were hyping up this show to be. Winter's coming. They get it. They're coming to Texas. They're coming to AEW. Winter's coming. And yet they just like a backstage segment. segment. Not even a, a in-ring segment. It was just like a big fuck you to these people. It was like fuck you. You know we, you know, we, got, we know you got a movie coming up. We're just going to have you on Rampage. You know what he's going to fucking watch. What a big fuck you, huh? Wow. What a big fuck.
fuck you. Again, we're in a, uh, wow. Just also thinking about this is winter is coming, right? Where the fuck was thing? Where's the follow up with Edge and Christian from last week? Well, especially with the ending. You're just gonna drop the ball? What the fuck is wrong with this company? I swear, bro. Whatever. Whatever. This is this segment was one of the worst AEW segments I ever seen, and probably the one of the worst Chris Jericho segments I ever seen. And I like Chris Jericho. It's such a darn shame what the fuck this was. This was a terrible segment. Jericho and and Omega comes out. They're now you know the what was it the stupid game? They're the stupid Golden Jets. Jericho comes out talks about how you know I was taken by injury after full gear. You know I don't I, I don't think anybody knew that. I, I, don't, I don't even know. I was like wonder what the fuck this guy was. Came here and mentioned how he returned and colli collision and he got taken out too whatever. And then mentioned how oh you know oh we're, we're on the sites of the tag titles. Then gay ass Ricky Starks comes out with Big Bill. The big thing about this thing was fucking. Jericho says, "All I see is a better dressed, less charismatic version of, of Enzo Amore." Guy, he mentioned Enzo. Wow, because guy, him and Big Cass. Like, so this was uh, they 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 try to insult each other, and it didn't work. Jericho literally tossed like the lamest of all the insults that he in in the book. It didn't work. He called he called them Big Bill Starks. Which how the fuck did that? Why is that an insult? And, and the crowd chanted, but yes, because they're retarded. You know, they fucking chant. Cause get it, it's good. Big Billy Stark. How the fuck does that fucking mean? I don't know. Get it? Ah, uh, it, it didn't even sound gay or whatever. Because I guess, you know, Jericho doesn't want to get fired because, you know, he wants... Because AEW's all conclusive. They can't be homophobic or whatever. They can't do jokes that are trigger triggering to these SJWs. Because if they'll complain about Ric Flair being on AEW, just uh, ask you, hey, if you're a woman in 1826, come on, tell me. Woo! The nature boys, why did you have a good time? You can't say that. Because apparently that's triggering... Apparently, even though it's consensual, like, what he kind of asked, like, what the fuck is this? This is not funny. They were, like, trying to insult each other. It was fucking lame insults and fucking not even that. It's not even entertaining. It was so boring, too. It was like, I don't care because I don't give a fuck about Ricky Starks. I don't give a fuck about Big Bill. And I honestly really don't give a fuck about Kenny Omega. I really don't. I'm not this big Kenny Omega guy. I'm not. Kenny Omega's only fucking lovable by these indie fucking fans. And it's like, ugh, whatever. But I don't care. Like, And then the, and this just ends like, ah, uh, goodbye, and good night, bye bang. Like, it's his gay, it's some stupid gay closing that he does in the indies. And I don't give a fuck. I don't care. It just sounds so fucking gay. How about goodbye, and good night, yourself, out of your asshole. And g g get, out of my, get out of this universe, please. Fuck you, you're gay. Go with. Go take Kota Ibushi and go fucking pee on each other. I don't fucking know what some gay Japanese terms y'all do. Fuck out of here in this universe, please. Go kawaii dumpster fire out of here, please. Ay, ay, ay. I don't care. Anyways, um, the big thing, don't get it? They're facing World's End. They just challenge each other for World's End. That's the big takeaway of this. And it's like... It wasn't this already a thing? I don't care. Timeless Tony Stark comes out with Marar May again. They're invited to my big black couch. Um, this is an insult to my intelligence too. Fucking what's her name? Rio defeats Ruby Soho. Learning a chick who can't, who's looks like a preschool, who looks like a pedophile's dream beats a, uh, some fucking disgusting goth. Emo bitch, and I don't give a fuck. And they mentioned, oh, get it, this match is happening because of what happened back in April. Because they act like this is long term booking. 
Because they got mentioned one bullshit to lead to this match. Because they couldn't have any reason. See, that's why right. AEW has stories. No, that's bullshit. You're just finding a raise to make people pretend to care. That's AEW's thing. They claim they got the long-term booking. When in reality, there's no long-term booking. You're just relying on shit that you did in the past to make it seem as long-term booking. There hasn't been really a long-term booking type of sense in wrestling in a very long time. Okay? Just be on let's be honest here. Rush defeats Jay Lika by this this submission, I don't care. Then Jay White defeats Mark Briscoe, I don't care. I mean they're both losers, aren't they? Jay Lee and Mark Briscoe, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And in the main event, um, Yeah, anyway, so in the main event, some people thought this was going to be a draw or whatever. Anyways, Moxley defeats Swerve Strickland with via roll-up, so there was no draw. People thought this could go 20 minutes, which I kind of thought it was going to be because I thought that was gay, but, you know, I don't know. But thankfully, it didn't end in a draw. The match was fine. A lot of people thought this was such a great match. I, I thought, you know, that's overrating it. It's not really a great match because there's no real story, and plus I don't really, really care. Some of the selling was like not really working for me. Again, it's like not proper selling, really. But the match was whatever. I didn't really care much in all honesty. But I tried to watch in the match. The match was whatever. You know, it's okay. But yeah, Moxley won a bit of roll up. Good for him. I don't fucking care. Uh, but then after that, the big takeaway of this show was the, the was Hangman Page getting attacked by the Devil's worshippers, and the Devil comes out of the car. He has broad stro shoulders, supposedly. And it's like, whatever, okay. And that's how the show ends. The show ends with um, Hangman Page getting thrown to the car of glass. It was John J J Jack, uh, what's his stupid name? What's his stupid fuck? I forgot. I forgot. Jungle Boy Jack Perry. I don't fucking care. It must be Jack Perry. I don't care. That's so gay, too. And you're gonna reward him after you you suspended him? Like you're gonna fire Punk, but you I don't fucking care. I don't know. It makes no sense. I don't know. Whatever. That's fine the way to end the show, you know, get people to care, but come on here. For real. This show is called Winter is Coming. And this show did not feel big at all. Fuck this show. The size of double thing, which is the only storyline they basically have along with Edge Christian, which one of the stories they also have, but they didn't follow up with it. What was the story of this show and who cares? Just saying. I'm just keeping it real. Get your gauge closed by Newsies. Five minutes a bitch go, oh shit, oh shit. That's what I'm gonna say. Until next time, peace. Yeah, bye. Fuck this show. This show sucked. Probably the worst winter is coming it was. And AEW just fucking was boring, man. It's just boring. I don't know why you could smart pretend this shit is good because of good matches. Man, y'all like gay sex, for God's sakes. Like, fuck y'all.